I have great pleasure in welcoming the Prime Minister of the Republic of Vanuatu, and I invite him to address the General Assembly. Mr. Prime Minister. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the Republic of Vanuatu is honoured to meet under your presidency, and uh, we wish to associate ourselves with all other esteemed delegations in congratulating you and members of your bureau on your election to lead us uh, through this 68th session of the uh, United Nations General Assembly. Mr. President, on Syria, we have seen internal conflicts transformed into international disputes that uh, require solutions from this august body. During this session, there has been intense debate on the protracted conflict affecting the Syrian people and undermining uh, regional peace and uh, international peace. We join many other peace-loving nations to call for an end to the conflict and for the United Nations to do more strongly to enforce mm, the international ban on the uh, use of chemical weapons. We also urge the United States of America and the Russian Federation to take a strong leading role in the issue of Syria and in addressing the uh, chemical weapons issue there. We are concerned that these conflicts have often uh, derailed the international focus uh, from addressing much more important issues such as our common aspirations uh, for the Millennium Development Goals. It is unfair that countries resorting to such illegitimate acts can trigger wars that cost uh, a great deal of money, whereas the rest of the peace-loving countries and their people suffer the consequences uh, as uh, money is uh, spent uh, could uh, be diverted to better and more effective use. Mr. President, it is here from this platform that leaders of our nations have uh, spoken out uh, freely from their hearts in an endeavor to find common solutions in a bid to inspire uh, the community of nations believing in international peace and security. Our main objectives are to take collective decisions to address a spectrum of international issues, some of which require urgent action, such as that of climate change. It is here that we have called for recognition of the rights of women, children, and persons with disabilities who are caught up in conflicts and violence. It is here, Mr. President, that we have called for help for those who have been the object of discrimination because of their color, religion, or their political convictions. For the Republic of Vanuatu, this podium is the only international platform on which, year after year, since 1981, we have spoken out against colonialism and neo-imperialism in all its forms. And once again today, I stand here speaking on behalf of the entire population of our archipelago to be the voice of those who are still living in uh, the colonized territories. We know, Mr. President, that decolonization is still incomplete. Yet we have seen that the Special Committee on Decolonization is taking uh, more and more positive steps in its 2013 sessions and is recognizing the inalienable right of French Poly Polynesia to self-determination. We also applaud the work of the committee in maintaining discussion and dialogue on the question of New Caledonia. Uh, let me, at this juncture, thank the government of France for their cooperation in moving the decolonization process forward. It is important to continue this dialogue with the uh, clear aim of helping the Kanaki people to attain their independence. With the greatest possible respect, I encourage all parties to ensure that uh, the process uh, to achieve freedom shall remain on track. We in the Melanesian Spearhead Group 
are appreciative of the work of the Kanak and Socialist National Liberation Front as chair of the Melanesian Spearhead Group. Mr. President, the Republic of Vanuatu has just emerged from colonialism and achieved its political independence from condominium uh, 33 years ago. And based on our struggle for independence, we share the journey and the litany of heartaches and dreams of many of our brothers and sisters whose uh, rights uh, to greater political and civil freedom are uh, still bound by the shackles of imperialism and colonialism. Mr. President, I would like to reiterate here uh, the uh, appeal we made last year from this uh, podium uh, in the United Nations that the United Nations must always remain impartial and avoid any selective implementation of General Assembly resolutions and Security Council resolutions concerning the rights of all peoples who desire to be free from colonialism or any form of imperial venture. We can all talk of issues of terrorism, financial and economic crises, climate change, and uh, reach uh, some level of understanding of the seriousness of these challenges and the measures that must be taken to address them. We can all talk of good governance and the rule of law and respect for human rights. But when it comes to the issue of the rights of the people of West Papua, our voices uh, are silent, even from this podium. I wish to congratulate the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, who, when he visited Asia in 2012, emphasized that the United Nations will do all possible to ensure that human rights will be respected in West Papua. And I quote his words, whether you are an independent state, a non-self-governing territory, or anything else, uh, human rights are an inalienable and fundamental principle of the United Nations, end of quote. Now, we as members of the United Nations must call for these words to be translated into action. Uh, Mr. President, my government calls upon the United Nations to appoint a UN special representative to investigate alleged human rights in West Papua and its uh, political status in the light of the controversies uh, surrounding uh, the UN Temporary Executive Authority Administration established in the 1960s. Ever since the controversial act of free choice, West Papuans have always been consistently denied any sort of recognition by the United Nations. It is clear from many historical records that the Melanesian people of West Papua were the scapegoat of Cold War politics and were sacrificed to gratify the appetite for the natural resources this country possesses. Today, they are still victims of the ignorance of the United Nations. Mr. President, if the UN representative, Mr. Ortiz Sanz, described the West Papuan issue as a cancer growing on the side of the United Nations and that his job was to remove it, it is very clear today from what we have observed that this cancer has never been removed but merely concealed. One day it will have to be treated. We must not be afraid if the UN has made mistakes in the past. We must uh, admit our mistakes uh, and see that we are the stronger for that because uh, when we are weak and we admit our mistakes and then take corrective action, we become stronger and vibrant. As members of the United Nations, we all subscribe to the principles of democracy, good government, human rights, accountability and the rule of law as enshrined in the United Nations Charter. And in this age of technology, when nothing can escape the attention of civil society and governments, Mr. President, I ask, how then can we ignore the hundreds of thousands of West Papuans who have been brutally beaten and murdered? Mr. President, the people of West Papua 
are looking to the United Nations as a beacon of hope. We are now deliberating the issue of Syria. My dear fellow leaders with uh, the same spirit, let us uh, express our support for West Papuans. It is time for uh, the United Nations to move beyond its limits uh, and rectify the errors of the past. Mr. President, since our independence 33 years ago, the indigenous peoples of my country have remained concerned that part of our maritime and cultural jurisdiction, including Umanapupe, Matthew, and Leka Hunter Islands, uh, lying to the south of Vanuatu, are still occupied by France. Thus, the people of our country are denied uh, the right uh, to the exercise of full political freedom and their inherent cultural rights. Uh, the indigenous peoples of the southern province of our country cannot therefore fulfill their obligations to protect their cultural and traditional obligations, binding them to their land, sovereign since time immemorial. These two islands are of paramount importance because they form the basis of the establishment of our unique cultural framework, connecting our cultural island group known as the Tafea Islands. It is this cultural framework which has governed and defined our identity and our way of life long before uh, administrative colonial powers began to explore and uh, govern our shores. Alas, today, our indigenous peoples continue to be denied access to these cultural and sacred islands. My government, therefore, calls upon the community of nations in this assembly to uphold the principles of the respect of the rights of our indigenous peoples and their way of life. And we call upon the government of France to allow our indigenous people of Tafea to have access to the land of their forefathers, the Umanapepe and Leka Islands, to the south of the Republic of Vanuatu. Mr. President, the call by the United Nations to review the Millennium Development Goals and strategize the post-2015 development agenda compels us to rethink our global partnership structures and our national priorities better to achieve our goals in the period after 2015. My country has achieved some progress in achieving certain of the MDGs. However, the appropriate conditions for economic growth and development must be created. An integrated and balanced approach is required for the social, economic and environmental dimensions. In order to achieve this, my government has placed emphasis on climate change, renewable energy and the sustainable use of the environment. We have now created a separate uh, ministry of climate change energy and the environment to allow the government to address issues in this area. We would uh, welcome opportunities for unconditional partnership uh, better to address these important issues. It is clear, Mr. President, that there has been uh, much debate on the issue of climate change. However, the level uh, to which financial pledges have been met is unsatisfactory considering the fast pace of climate change-induced impacts on small island states. We call for more urgent actions and decisions on this front. Mr. President, while Vanuatu supports the sh shift in the development paradigm, we also recognize that the new development uh, agenda may harbor its own shortcomings and therefore must be given uh, careful consideration when it comes to its final design. It is evident that this new modality must take heed of the complexity that still exists within international aid development programs, and coupled with the risk of unpredictable financial crisis that can affect the delivery of aid. Secondly, challenges are faced by countries at present in attaining MDGs. And thirdly, the ambiguity and difficulty 
in deciding on uh, the priorities of girls within an expanded list of priorities. And fourthly, the imminent graduation of my country from LDC status and its accompanying benefits. And uh, fifthly, the risk of a reduced level of real aid spending per capita affected partly by a, a, a failure to increase global development aid. Cognizant of these issues, Vanatu has taken steps, partly on its own accord and with the assistance of our partners as well, to ensure greater resilience to its own vulnerabilities. Our plan involves taking decisions leading to quantum leaps in the development of the country's infrastructure with new roads, wharfs and airports being built and upgraded to allow inter alia for a greater integration of the rural population in the national economy. I wish to thank the governments of China, Australia, New Zealand and the Asian Development Bank uh, for their assistance and uh, my thanks also go to the Government of the United States for its uh, significant investment in the two major national highways in Vanuatu. We see this as investing in the future of my country where 60% of our population is aged 25 or under. And most uh, people live in the, living in the rural areas will be given a greater opportunity to have access to markets and economic opportunities throughout our island archipelago. Mr. President, all the initiatives we take uh, to foster development must be inclusive and not leave behind the poor and uh, those at the margins of our society. My country has taken appropriate action to ensure gender equality and women's empowerment. Uh, government actions include legislation amending uh, gender discriminatory laws, addressing issues of domestic violence, and uh, including the uh, presentation of universal periodic reports uh, uh, to uh, ensure our compliance with the reporting framework of the Human Rights Convention. Lastly, Mr. President, as I conclude, I wish to thank you once again uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to express my views in this forum. We have spoken much of many things, and now we will need to match our words by action. Long live our aspirations for a better and more secure world for everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. President.